give us a drive to 13 Mitigator Ford Fusion. I'd like to thank you for listening to Let's Talk Racing.tv. Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs>
I, if just let, so I can get internet. If you let me know, I'll come up on a Sunday and I'll bring the saws and implements of destructions and we will take care of them properly. Okay, I was going to let them green out and then just probably have campfires wherever they lay it. Oh, really? Yeah, you know. Well, that's how most of the parties go at my house. We start with some wood and get some grilling, you know. Maybe some bocce oh, ball yeah. or some horseshoes or something along the lines of that. And then and a piece of furniture usually goes in the fire. <laughs> I, I have a great stump burning story about you. We had a stump burning party one night. And we'll have to get into that a little bit later. i got three of them. We'll have a triple header at my house. Come on down. We had a great one, but... It's not for public. <laughs> oh, oh, well, oh, we'll yeah, over there. All right. Okay, I'm gonna get to you in a second. We're gonna talk to you. I gotta. I'm yeah. gonna. I'm gonna plug this for. Yeah, we're supposed to talk about that. racing, yeah. right? Yeah, we, we're supposed to be talking about racing. Okay. Right? Stump burning is actually more fun. Uh, Friday, October twelfth, Hard Rock Cafe, Las Vegas. Fourteenth, today's the twelfth. The one okay. four makes fourteen. Okay, yeah, October fourteenth. I did say the twelfth, didn't I? I could have. Okay, eight p.m. You got to be eighteen to enter, twenty-one to drink, free admission. Hard Rock Cafe. It's see the show, Las Vegas, presented by Honda Generators and Motor Media. Yeah. IndyCar driver, NASCAR, and ARCA drivers so far signed on is Ricky Byers, Joey Coulter. Cassie Gannis, yep. uh, um, IndyCar driver, or not an IndyCar? Yeah, IndyCar driver, right? No, k and West Series, that's what she was. Jeremiah Jensen, Molly Celine, and IndyCar driver P.J. Chesson. There's a silent auction, Racing for a Cure, and World Motorsports Breast Cancer Foundation. Uh, 8 p.m. is meet and greet. And the silent auction begins. 11 p.m. The silent auction ends. Uh, there is a DJ going to be there at nine o'clock. Um, live performance by Fall in Vain. Um, I could have swore. Oh, our. I always have a hard time pronouncing this name like everybody else. Ari Lyondike. Yep. Yeah, you got it. We'll be there from six to seven p.m. In the IndyCar fan zone at Mandalay Bay. Indy 500 winner. Yep. Indy 500 winner. Multiple times? How many Indy 500s did Indy Ari Lyon like win? I think he only won one. Only one? Maybe two. He might be multiple. <laughs> it only says. Oh, I. We're done. <laughs> two time IndyCar. Two, two, keep reading. Two yeah. time. Keep I reading. Was right. I said, I said, two time. <laughs> And I bet if you rewind it, I said two time. And then he Might registered have. that he And goes. it didn't register that two time, two time you said. Yeah, that's two time. He told him to go time. low and he kept going straight. Repetition oh, you say it two time. <laughs> um, and there is a couple of guys that will call in and talk to us about this, but I guess we haven't gotten back to them. Oh, I, I can call okay. pretty, much any one, pretty much any one of them and just put them right on the thing anyway. I know all their numbers. Okay, that one's done. Because <laughs> he's got connections like that. Because he's the Raj, man. The PC guy. He's, he's the Raj. Okay. Connected. That one's done. You need the glass crashing sound like Letterman has. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he does the pen. <laughs> Who was it that did the paper? I don't know, Johnny Carson with the old Johnny uh, Carnac thing or something like yeah. that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I'm going to promote this. I don't know. Um, Infield Jen has just about got her website up. You can go view it. And Jennifer Cannon. Drello. Calendrillo. Calendrillo. I'll get it right this this one of these times. Infield Jen, just about up. I was just talking to her, so she's probably watching. Hi. Go check it out. Neat little deal. You had a little bit of help on that. Yep, yeah, yep. started up and kicked up. Okay, now Cliff, guess what? what We're gonna talk to you. Uh second year CHKD. Mm -hmm. You're doing it again. Yep. You want the abuse. Yeah. But well, we got more teams this year. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about it. Yeah, we've got the second CHKD race we're doing. Um, it's American Indoor Karting again, obviously, at Virginia Beach. Um, it's on October 24th, a Monday night. Since we've got two races this time, we've actually increased the time. It's going to be from 5 to 9 p.m. I've actually got somewhat of a, a concrete timeline for the event. We're actually trying to get most of the drivers there by 5. Uh, 
I'm going to try and have a driver's meet at 5.15, get all the drivers in the room and talk about what the plans are. Obviously, we're going to try and everybody's going to pick one driver from each team to go out and qualify. So, you know, whoever your best people already put down some fast laps, they, those would be the guys to pick. And we probably start qualifying around 5.30. We don't want any more than about four, three or four cart drivers on the track at the same time. So, you know, give ample room to get their laps in. Only five laps each, so we'll get it done pretty quick. And once we got that all organized, we'll go from pretty much the slowest to fastest and organized for races. The slower people will be in the first race, and then we'll have the second race to faster people. So, And then I think in, after the first race is over, we'll have a quick um, check of the carts, refuel them, all that kind of stuff, make sure everything's good to go, and we'll start the next race and just keep hammering through it. So. And of course, like once again, we're trying, you know, we got most teams already. We're still obviously trying to get more people to participate. Um, I know Monday night's not the most convenient night for people to come out, especially as the length of the event is. Especially for me, I get to go into work two hours later, so. But, you know. You'll, you'll be all ready and primed. Oh, yeah, I'll be jacked up. I'll be ready to go. Definitely. Um, but, yeah, we've got a lot of people in here already. We've obviously got a lot of people returning from last year. We've got Joe and Matt. They participate in the event. Rogers decided to opt out this time so he doesn't hurt anybody. But <laughs> um, now I wasn't supposed to race the last time. Yeah, right? that's now true. I was supposed to run. Uh huh. Yeah, and I know. He was on my team and I decided to hop in. He was busy. Last minute thing. I know I ran <laughs> yeah. into you several times, but I gave you the wave, which makes it okay, right? <laughs> Sorry. <It's> apologetic. <laughs> which which wave did you get? The this, one before this one. or the one after? Oh, I get the wham. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. Apologetic. Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we got a lot of people coming back. Even the arena team, obviously Spencer Saunders, uh, Ryan Center, Matt Waltz, Matt Morgan, Derek Miller. They're all the reigning champs from last year. So I know most people are trying to knock them off this year. They're so. losers this year. <laughs> so I'm sure people, will, everybody else will probably have a little bit different strategy this year trying to keep up with them. And obviously we'll have Bill Moss is going to participate in again. So that's great. And actually for the pro wing team, um, Bruce and Kay Albin of Pick Your Photos from Lenny Speedway have graciously decided to sponsor a team out there. They're paying for the whole fee and all that stuff. They're actually sponsoring the, the Pro Wing division. So they'll all be out there in their bright yellow Pick Your Photos shirt. So. And cool. they'll be out there to take photos too, which will be great. We've, uh, we've got a plan to keep up with them this year. The entire team is going to inhale helium before we go out to make up for that 50, 60 pound difference. Get that, that we, light. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we got to talk about that because and it, and these little for, turkeys. It makes for a really cool interview if you win it. Right. <laughs> yeah, if you can hold yeah. it in long enough. And the Mouse Club won tonight. <laughs> we got to talk about this because, like, Spencer and that team has probably got 200 pounds less than what my team does. Right. You just got to yeah, gang up on them. <laughs> oh, believe you me, if I get my the lens one lens. of my ringers, <laughs> you won't get by him. Yeah, yeah, and that's definitely uh, something that is going to be an issue out there. The biggest thing is, you know, how the race starts and goes all well, and people get out there and try to keep up with them. I know weight's kind of a disadvantage, you know, regardless of how much skill you've got. Really? Eight carts. <laughs> Up to a certain point, yes, it makes a difference, definitely. But, um, and they reconfigured the track, too. I think they flipped it backwards, and I don't know if they sharpened out one of the turns or something like that. So it's been suggested to people to come out and practice beforehand, and they actually, for anybody that's on the list already confirmed for, we actually got a, a deal for $15. You can go out there and tell them that you're racing or whatever, and you can pay $15 for a race, and five of those dollars go to CSKD. So oh, cool. cool. We're actually making money. Yeah, we're going to have to do that. It happens, yeah. A lot of people, I think. Yeah. Probably a good idea. I don't even. I haven't been out there since last year myself, unfortunately. You'll have so to busy. make it down one night. We'll we'll go over and practice. Practice. <laughs> so practice. we can tear each other up before the race. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll get it all out. Yeah, get it all out of our system. <laughs> sure. Learn how sure. much it hurts beforehand. Yeah, exactly. and I don't want to do that anymore. We need right. about three or four days beforehand, so you know we can heal up. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. You know, enough time to get to the ER and home. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let the bruises come out all the way. Right. You right. Know. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Be able to fill your prescription for pain. Yeah. Yep. Pain management. And, yep. and then we'll go racing. Sure. <laughs> and Raj is bringing out the phone. Oh. Da -da -da -da. Who do we got? Will be Monica Palumbo once I get the phone numbers line. Hey, Monica, you there? I am here. K give us one second. We're talking to Clifton here. We're talking about a charity race. Let me finish up, and then we're going to get you on there. And if you want to jump in, 
feel free. Okay, sounds good. Thank okay. you. Actually, I think we still got a seat available if you really want to jump into it. You can come yeah. out for the cart race. <laughs> oh, yeah. we got. Hey, we can do that now. What are you doing on the 24th, right? Yeah. Exactly. What day is that? Monday? Monday, October 24th. I don't know. Working. I work like three jobs at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> You're like every other American right now. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, um, October 24th, CHKD race, charity race. Um, you got any sponsors yet? Um, no, we're still working on getting some sponsors, mainly for obviously teams. You know, anybody who's got your teams, race teams, and stuff like that, want to help out. That'd be a big plus. And I was working on trying to get Racing for Hope involved. I think they're going to try and put a team together. Actually, I don't to think the drivers that too, already so. though. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Not to be confused with Hopelessly Racing, which is probably my team name. Do we have a team name? I haven't even given a name no. yet. I need, yeah. The Mad Modifieds. Mad Modifieds. Mad Modifieds. Mad Modifieds. I've got sure. my Let's Talk Racing No, no, no team, wait a second. So. <coughs> what? Perfect name for y'all. Mad Dogs? Mad Men. Oh. Mad, Mad Men. Well, we got, we, it's, it's a co-ed team. We're not all mad. Yeah. I like Mad I Dog. Am. And she's coming. Mad Dog. Right? Mad there dog. you go. Mad Dog. That's she's going to call out sick twice and dead once, and she's going to join us on the team. Because, I mean, you can't use <laughs> well, three sick I, days in one day. Spot, yeah. Now, wait a second. Wait a second. I was the one that suggested it. I want to get her on my team. You <laughs> called it first. <laughs> <laughs> Monica, already, flip a coin. They're already you want to win or not? <laughs> all I know is I might be drinking Mad Dogs on the sideline, but I'll be there as a Mad Dog. Hey, you there know you what? Go. If you dr if you drink while you drive in this cart race, I'll I'll buy the, the color of your choice. <laughs> <laughs> Attach it to the helmet. It'll be colorful. Uh, well, oh, one of the beer beer can things. <laughs> the, the, beer bottle can deals. the doctor on the back with yeah. the straw around the front. <laughs> there you go. Uh, oh, that would be interesting. <laughs> hey, now we can. Well, no, now this is start, for kids. Now, now wait a second. Wait a second. Red, <laughs> this is for CHKD. If we were doing it for another charity, we could have a beer lap. <laughs> we need to go to my crew chief's house and, and just bring like fun cards. Yeah, because this, yeah, we they would definitely. We'll talk about that later. We could do that yeah. one later. <laughs> okay, let's get that uh, finished up. Another idea. Um, starts at five. We're gonna try to run five to whenever, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, five okay. to nine. Four approximately is when the last race will finish. I, I'm looking at. We got 15 teams right now. You gotta have two races, 100 minutes each. Right. Five on a team. Mm -hmm. No time limit. Um, for yeah, driver's loss, yeah, I mean it's 100 minutes, and obviously everybody has a swap out. I think everybody, I think we're doing like a minimum of five laps, ten laps, something like that. Okay. So, but yeah. All right. Got swap out. Got got so a minimum of five swaps. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is yeah, that, and that's what you said. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What about this weight deal? We got to talk about that. We've got to handicap. <laughs> These little ninety-eight pound kids now, against hold on this now. hundred and seventy. I've got some nice little ringers in my group here. <laughs> Okay, we got to handicap that. Is there any way we can do that? I would have to talk to track about that. We could maybe scuba be weights, it. scuba di diving weights. Okay. Yes. Attached to the tires. I like it. Yes, <laughs> me too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what are you going to do? Have every so. driver do a weigh in before they get in their cart? <laughs> we'll do it like uh, jockeys. We'll just fill their pockets with lead shot. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Are we we are, are we good? Are you going to stick around? Cause oh yeah. We're talking okay, to uh, Miss Sprint Cup here, yeah. Monica. She's hot, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> and modest. <laughs> well, I don't know. She was talking mad dog, so. <laughs> What's wrong with that? That's not, There's that's not a thing wrong with, with modesty. That. <laughs> she says, just, just says she's social. She's being truthful. Right. Right. That's good. Yeah, well, yeah. okay. I'll go with you on that. Right. <laughs> Oh, and I do have a couple of uh, Mad Dog stories, too. We'll, we'll get, get into them, them later. <laughs> also, um, I also have an interview Wednesday. Next Wednesday, I'm going to go to 13 News and actually do a noon afternoon shoot for the event. Try and plug that, get some stuff out there on the very um, good, very good. You know, actually, I uh, one of my sponsors on, on my modified is GoPro. Maybe we could possibly uh, at least get one or two yeah. cameras or something going there. Oh yeah. I oh know. yeah. That'd if they be survive great. on the bumpers on my modified, <laughs> oh no, they won't make it on a bumper. Go <laughs> yeah. Why wouldn't they? Well, I mean, well, you, you were at that race last year. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't know if they actually have it at that track. I know one track they actually had attachments where you know you could slide it on the helmet and stuff. Yeah, yeah. They I gave see me a lot like of go karters doing that too. Stuff, and then I made um, a couple of my own. Chris Johnson had one um, that um, uh, Brett Groshams put on there. It was 3D. 
Oh, it had wow. two of the cameras, yeah. and one of them was upside down. Yeah, I've seen then he's that. got a program really? on his computer. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure that's So you like sit at home with funny glasses on and watch exactly. the Exactly, and, and it's in 3D. When the car crashes, you get hit with it's something. Like yeah. Right in front of you. It's cool. like well, could you imagine doing that off the bumper of a car? Oh, that'd be crazy. Uh, yeah, i got to show you the video have on the, the bumper as it is. It, it kind of reaches out. I don't know if you really want to put it on the bumper as much as Well, I think he had it set back enough, but it was facing towards the rear, so I bet that would be cool. Well, I mean, with the zoom and stuff, I mean, I even had my old GoPro on my Pro Wings on the bumper one time, and you'll, I actually have a video on one of my YouTube accounts, and it's like, yeah, it comes right up against it. Yeah. So, yeah. We tried, cool. we tried a lipstick camera at Manassas a couple of years ago in the Legends. Uh -huh. It vibrated so bad that... You couldn't see nothing. Really? You could you, you could distinguish colors. Yeah, that was the brackets, it. I had a little problem with a couple of brackets like that. It was just too much yeah, wind on it. If you got something that's not a solid. Oh, no, this was just pure vibration. Oh, hey. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice to see. Yeah. Tell, yeah. tell you what, let's go ahead and get talking to Monica here. She's, she's been patiently <laughs> waiting in the sideline here. I hope she's been enjoying this. This is the kind of the way we are, Monica. Oh, I have been. Sorry. It's girl night tonight. So I'm out with my girlfriend, so I had to walk outside. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Uh, 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 and I suppose we're enjoying a little bit of Mad Dog? Yes, exactly. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Monica, tell us a little bit about yourself, and how did you become Miss Sprint Cup? Oh, wow. That's a loaded question. Um, well, I'm born and raised in Charlotte. Um, I've been surrounded by NASCAR my whole life, and um, I, I was actually working for Bobby Labonte doing his mobile marketing, and I heard they were starting this new program, the Miss Sprint Cups, because I knew they had Miss Winston's back in the day, so I just sent in my resume and went in for about three or four interviews, and they finally hired me. So I've been here for about a well, fourth year. Um, it's been amazing, traveling around every weekend, track to track, and meeting so many people, so it's been wonderful. Now, if I understand it, on Tuesday mornings, you bring breakfast to the winners of the races? Yeah, exactly. It just depends. It could be Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever day works for the shop. But, but we try to shoot for, choose, for Tuesday. Um, we bring them Panera bagels and pastries and coffee, and the guys love it. And we tweet about it. We Facebook about it and show all the fans um, kind of what, you know, what's happening at the shop, what, what the crew guys are all about because, you know, the drivers get all the attention every weekend, so it's kind of nice to show the crew guys some love. Hey, that's cool. Now, now, is this pretty much a full-time gig? You just said you do three other jobs, but but is this kind of a full-time gig for you? It is, just because of travel. Um, like, for example, for Kansas, we'll go in on a Tuesday or this weekend. You know, we start, you know, Thursday through Monday or whatever. Um, so just due to travel, it's a full-time job, but I'm... Um, Doing morning radio, actually, here in Charlotte, and also hosting a direct TV uh, NASCAR show that premieres this Saturday. Oh, cool. Yeah, no, I'm pretty psyched about it. It's called um, Fast Lane for Fun, and it's about the drivers when they're when they're at home and what they do on their days off. So um, it will be on at 2 o'clock and at 7 o'clock this Saturday. You're, you're also, for people that don't know, you're actually in Victory Lane when these guys come in, too, don't you? Aren't you? Yeah, and the funny thing is, is that the smallest part of our job is Victory Lane, um, but that's what the most people see, so they think, what do these girls do? They just fly in for Victory Lane and, you know, get sprayed with champagne and coke and just stand there and smile, um, but we're actually there, we're there all weekend, Thursday or Tuesday, depending on what kind of um, marketing we have going on that week, if we're promoting a new phone that's coming out or... Um, but generally, we're at the Sprint Experience, you know, Thursday through Sunday, and uh, we'll be out there all weekend long. It's free for all the race fans. Brian Vickers will be out there at 4 o'clock on um, Saturday, so come on out if you're heading out to the race this weekend. But, yeah, we're busy, and Victory Lane is just a small part, but it's one of the funnest parts of the job. You were at Kansas in June, weren't you? Uh, yeah, we're there, and, and we just came back from Kansas Sunday night. Yep. Have you been to all the races this year now? Not every single race. I'll take, you know, there's probably one once a month or one every other month off. Um, but out of the four years, I've been to every single track. Wow. What's your favorite? It just depends. I love um, Bristol and I love Talladega. Uh, 
the racetracks are obviously completely different, short track and super speedway. Um, but just the atmosphere, I just yeah. it's, it's just the NASCAR community atmosphere. It's all about camping out and tailgating, and people have been there for years and made friends with their neighbors. And I, I don't know, I just I just love going to those tracks. I absolutely love it. That is two, probably two of the best races. I mean, Bristol's always good. Talladega actually it can get very exciting. Well, I mean, they're both as, as unique as Daytona on the, on the series, and yeah. it's, I would have to say they're probably the three highlights of, of the of the series: Daytona, Talladega, Bristol. Yep. Martinsville. Yeah, Martinsville. Martinsville's fun, but Talladega Martinsville's is like Mardi Gras of all races. I mean, yeah. they made a movie named Martinsville after Martinsville, which is kind of funny. Yeah. But um, it is just. So much fun. It's just a party nonstop. Uh, but I'm actually a big fan of the road courses as well. I know a lot of race fans aren't big fans of road course racing, but I love it just because you can see the guys turn turn left and turn right or, you know, downhill a little bit and uphill a little bit. So it's kind of nice to spice it up a little bit. Yeah, now road courses are good. They, they are. i got to give them that. And, and we got a road I'm, course. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of road racing. Here, but I've always liked I them, too. I enjoy road racing. Yeah. So... <laughs> Um, what else are your duties? You just said you're doing a, a, a direct TV show, Miss Sprint Cup. I'm sure you got more than just being at the racetrack. Yeah, I mean, but that takes up a lot of our times. I mean, we work 13 hour days when we're out at the racetrack, emceeing events, uh, Speed TV on Tuesdays, NASCAR.com videos every weekend. I'll be on um, doing a CNN tidbit this weekend as well. So we stay really busy office days during the week. Um, I mean, I, the month of September, I was home probably a total eight days, and I didn't have one day off for about four weeks. So we stay really, really, really busy. Okay, uh, since since we've what? been arguing over this right now, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out officially, we would like to invite you up for this race. And you said it's October 24th. It's a Monday. Yep, you'll yeah. be coming. You'll be back from Daytona or Talladega. Talladega. We'll see. I know I'm actually filming a Dale Jr. commercial on that Tuesday, and i got to be camera ready. So um, I'll, I'll definitely try if I'm not working that day. We'll give you a full face helmet. You'll be fine. <laughs> there you go. That works. Okay. Like it, it's it's for a great it's cause. It, it's, it's up here in Virginia Beach. It's for CHKD. Um, and little over half of, the, of everything raised goes to uh, yeah. Children's Hospital of the King's Daughters. Children's Hospital of the King's Thank Daughters. You. So it is a good thing. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to rephrase this very softly. But we've had a Miss Winston, and we've had a Miss... I, I think two of them I got married to drivers. Are, are, are we looking at a driver at some kind of down the, the road? No, not at all, actually. Um, we signed a contract at the beginning of the year. Uh, no dating involved. I'm actually engaged. I'm getting married in May to a college sweetheart. So no drivers, not dating any drivers. It's not in my near future at all. I'm sure he's okay. glad to hear that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I bet he's glad to hear that. Uh, you know, hey, I just had to throw it out there. Can you name the two? Well, Jeff Gordon's got one. Uh, Can you name two? Patty Petty. The, the drivers or, or Patty Petty and and Brenda Gordon, hmm. Jeff Gordon's first wife. Right, right, right. right. I remember Gordon, but yeah. I didn't know uh, I didn't know Petty. Yeah, Patty I, Petty. I didn't know that. <sighs> we got him stoked. That's off. Kyle's wife. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, Kyle's wife. Yeah, no, I'm definitely not looking for a husband in the in the racing industry. I figured, like, junior, That's a good I was going to go with, like, Junior Johnson, probably picked himself up like a 24-year-old trophy girl. And... Pretty good looking. <laughs> no, but he did pick up a, a He's girl got a wife quite like, younger. Yeah, considerably younger than him. But... Hey, he knows where to find the moonshine. I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I don't have to stay away from that moonshine. Woo. What? What's? <laughs> when is that bachelorette? <laughs> you, just, you just said you've been doing this. <laughs> You've been doing this for four years. Can you name, it's always hard to say, but what's your best memory? Oh, wow. Um, let's see. This job has enabled me to do so many things. I would say uh, in D.C. we got to go to um, 
Walter Reed, every year they have NASCAR Day. And uh, being able to spend the day with the Wounded Warriors has actually been probably the biggest highlight since I've done this job. Hands down. That's kind of that's kind of cool. It, yeah, it doesn't get any better than it, that. It really. doesn't get I mean, any better than that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was amazing, um, and a lot of the drivers came out, and basically a day just to kind of alleviate the guys' pain or trauma or whatever they're going through, just for a day, um, and just to be able to be a part of that was, was probably the best thing I've I've done in the past four years. Um, that and also this year I got to go to the top of the Golden Gate Bridge. With Clint Boyer, so that was pretty fun, too. Oh, cool. Like that top, top? <laughs> yeah, we rode in this elevator. It was like a three-person oh. elevator, and it took probably ten minutes just to get to the very top of the Golden Gate Bridge. And we had to, we, we were able to walk out on one of the big beams over top, like, we, we could walk across the highway on top of the Golden Gate Bridge. Wow. It was, like, exhilarating. That was really cool. <laughs> That's, uh, I, I don't think I'd use exhilarating. That sounds puckering. <laughs> as long as you're not afraid of heights, I think it would be okay. I'm not afraid of heights. Yeah. I'm afraid of falling. We're Actually, it's the landing in the bottom that really scares the hell out of, the of me. Of the <laughs> if you fell off the Golden Gate Bridge, you'd have a lot of time to think about how you're going to And that's the problem. Land. You know, I, I don't have a problem with like going splat. You know, maybe you get like half of the ocean. It's over. It's that. Oh, geez, I left the stove on. I got to ride a will on the way down. <laughs> well, all right, now, are you going to be jumping onto the asphalt, or are you going for the water? Oh, I, I don't know. You'd probably be dead, at that point. Way, first first thing you can't even get yeah. it over with at that point. <laughs> You'd be dead. <coughs> All right, Monica. I, Cleaner in the water. <laughs> do we got any? Is we got a? Do we got to call our next one, or can we just leave no, her on? She'll be calling. Okay. Well, we're going to talk to you some more. Who's your favorite driver? Uh oh. Uh oh. Loaded question. Oh uh, yeah, it is. I actually have a few. I love the Stewart Hawks, Hawks guys. I love Tony Stewart. Uh, I love Brian Newman. They're really funny. I don't know if you guys have had them on the air, but, uh, you know, sometimes Ryan and everyone takes them so seriously. But if you get an interview with him or if you get to know him one-on-one, -on -one, he is absolutely hilarious. He is so funny. The, the wittiness, that, the things that come out of his mouth is so funny. Um, I would say, you know, definitely Ryan Newman. A.J. Allmendinger is actually one of my favorites, too. And you can tell I'm all about humor. I love someone that's funny. So those two are actually my top two favorites. That's cool. I've heard that about A.J. I, I haven't heard that about Ryan, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Ryan, and that's the Ryan. thing. A lot of people don't know that about him. Um, yeah. If you get to know him, he he's just so funny. I mean, I, I look at him sometimes. I'm like, what made you say that? Where did you come up with that? <laughs> He's got that good education to come up with all that good stuff. Um, we had a barbecue this weekend in Kansas, um, and the driver, I don't know, all the drivers came, and, and we're making s'mores and whatnot, and, and Ryan comes like two hours late. You know, people are starting to leave, and he has on like full camouflage, so we're joking around, Ryan's here, oh, we can't see him, he's in camouflage. And he still has his, like, knife on him and everything. Where did he go during, you know, the night before the big race? He went hunting. <laughs> and he shows up to this nice, you know, barbecue in hunting gear with his knife on. It, it was awesome. <laughs> he he went out hunt well, Kansas, yeah. About that's, that time of the year, so and it's well, in I mean, the boondocks. That's that's, that's uh, your, your typical side hobby for for a NASCAR racer. Right. I mean, yeah, uh, hunting. exactly. Yeah, you know, our Earnhardt and Childress forever. Every race was just a hunting trip somewhere else. Yeah, that's or true. fishing. Yeah. yeah, or fishing. Yeah, or yeah. fishing. Yeah, or fishing. And then fishing, they always had the competition who had the fastest bass boat. And I don't really know why you need a bass boat to do 85 miles an hour. A bass can't swim anywhere near that fast. <laughs> do you know why? I have questioned that myself. And a but I bet mine, it takes the fight out of him when you hook him. Well, right. a yeah. friend of mine it does all does some competitions in Missouri. I'm actually from Kansas City, Monica. How um, are you? Yeah, I'm originally I'm originally from Iowa, but I graduated high school in Kansas City. Um, that place is wonderful, isn't it? It that is a great little place around that track, isn't it? Great barbecue. We had the best time in Kansas City. Yeah. Where where did you did you stay right there at the um um right there at the track? Well we we normally do, that way we can just literally walk to work. Uh but this time they put us out at the plaza area which has really cool restaurants and shops and all that cool stuff. But um I think it was last year the race was in town the same weekend as the barbecue festival. Yeah. I guess 
these guys stay up 24 hours and marinate their barbecue. And uh, we That's went cool. out to that the night before the race and just had the best time out there. It felt like tailgating before an race. How many, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll finish this story real quick, and I'm going to get right back to you. It's to get to the fishing spot faster. It's to get to the fishing spot faster than anybody else. Right, right. Because the That's fish exactly will leave after why the first boat gets there. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That's really? exactly right. Another fish. Um, <laughs> how many times, you, now you said you're going out tonight. Do you get recognized a lot? No, I mean, not at all. This is this is my hometown, and no, I mean, rarely. There might be one every randomly. They're like, are you that sprint girl? I'm like, or they'll say, are you Danica Patrick? <laughs> <laughs> and the correct There's response is, no, I'm Cher. <laughs> <laughs> exactly said no not not at all no no one knows who i am what, what you need monica is if we ever get a chance to get you on here on the video part of the show instead of a call in and you will be surprised the people then will start recognizing you we've had track owners that people know their names but they'll know them from the show oh really that's cool it's, and i mean one of the track owners uh went down to florida he goes, hey, aren't you from Let's Talk Racing? <laughs> oh, my God. And he, he, was, he, he wasn't happy with that, but it was sort of funny. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Um, even when you, like, when you go to Kansas, you don't even get recognized when you go out, or do you kind of go incognito when you go out? Uh, well, we really don't have time to go. I mean, for dinner, we'll go out. Yeah, sometimes, because I went to um, Oklahoma Joe's. Which I'm sure you're familiar with. It's a yep. barbecue place in a gas station, literally. Yep. And we came straight from the track, and I had my fire suit on, and you can hear people kind of whisper, like, "Is that Danica or is that Miss <laughs> 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 um, so, I mean, yeah. When you're around the racetrack, sometimes it's kind of cool. It's really, it's really neat. Yeah, I bet it is. Monica, I know we got our next guest on here, and we're going to get to her. I want to thank you for joining us. Please consider coming up for our CHKD. At least be our trophy girl. <laughs> there you go. Uh, no problem. Thank you so much for having me on air, and uh, I'll definitely try to make it up for the 24th. And we're going to get you awesome. back on here again. Are, are, now, are you going to do it next year? Have you signed on yet? I have not. I'm actually not doing it next year. Um, this is it for me. I have a few more races left, and just kind of, I want to stay in the sport. I want to stay in NASCAR, but I don't know what is next. We'll see. All right. Well, when you do, let us know. My team's got a position for Umbrella Girl. I mean, it's a starter. <laughs> I got to start somewhere. <laughs> there you go. Monica, thanks for having us, and go have a good time with your girlfriends tonight. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. All right, you, you too. too. Bye-bye. All right, bye. Bye-bye. And now we're moving on, right? Moving on. Katie, Linda Mood? Yes, that's right. Is that correct? CEO of SkirtsAndScuffs.com. What is Skirts and Scuffs? Skirts and Scuffs is a NASCAR website, and all of our contributors are female. Um, the whole idea is to show that not every fan, not, that not every female fan is a fan because they're in love with the driver or because their spouse follows the sport. Women get stereotyped as being fans for that reason a lot of the time, or when people find out you're a fan, they automatically say, oh, you must be a Casey Kane fan. And we want to try to debunk that stereotype, basically. Um, now, as contributors, you mean like um, um, press uh, people, news people? We have 20 active writers and two photographers right now. Um, we travel to the track when we can. Um, we have writers all across the U.S. Um, our Backgrounds vary. We have everybody from a stay-at-home mom to a retired Navy sailor. Wow. And pretty much they're NASCAR fans. They follow the sport. Yeah, some have been fans for 20 years like I have been. Others have been fans for two or three years. Um, there's Some have like media backgrounds. Um, our lead editor, Rebecca Kivok, she works for a newspaper. Others are just fans who found the site and thought, I can do this. Let's, and they just contribute a few articles a month. Um, we have some regular columnists, and then we just have a few that you know write when they can. Right. Um, 
And now, uh, this is really going to sound weird, but what are they writing about? Are they just writing about the, the, the race? Are they doing interviews with the, the drivers? You know, how in-depth are you getting this? Um, we actually have three of our writers do a lot of interviews. Um, three of our contributors do a lot of interviews. Um, Melissa Wright, Wendy Best, and Amanda Ebersole. Um They do probably... Um, they've interviewed drivers, um, NASCAR wives, pit crew members. Melissa does a column called Over the Wall, where she interviews like spotters, crew members, things like that. Um, Lindy focuses on women in NASCAR, writing about um, either driver, female drivers, or the like mothers of drivers, or the wives cheering on their husbands from the pit box. And Amanda kind of does a little bit of everything. She um, interviews, today she actually interviewed Miguel Paludo from the Truck Series. Right. And um, we, we just do a little bit of everything. Do a little bit of everything. Well, and and, and then now here's the real big kicker. It's just like you said, it's all women. It's all from the women's kind of point of view. Right. Now, is this is this all NASCAR? Are you covering all aspects of motorsports, or we, we basically focus on NASCAR. We do do a few IndyCar things here and there, a few ARCA pieces, but our main focus is always the NASCAR. All of the women who contribute to the site, we all united because of NASCAR, but some of us have varying interests. A lot of our contributors follow IndyCar quite religiously as well, so we we're, we're trying to move in a forward direction and start expanding a little bit. Uh, we did interviews at Incineon Raceway about a month ago, two months ago, with um, Julio Castaneves, uh, Brian Bristow, and Will Power all in one weekend. And they finished one, two, three that weekend, so it was kind of a cool deal. Oh, cool. It's always good to have success when you get really? involved in that. Yeah, yeah. 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 You get kicking. Um, how did you get involved in this? How did you start this? Um, how? What's your tie-in with racing? Okay, I became a fan in at, during the Daytona 500 in 1993. I, for some reason, racing had never been part of my family's background or anything. I have no idea why the race was even turned on that day on the television. But I remember I was 12 years old at the time, and I thought this is the most boring thing in the world. <laughs> why am I watching this? Why are these people driving around in circles? And I remember thinking that if someone would have a wreck, that would be so cool. I was 12. <laughs> and about and about the time I thought that, Rusty Wallace went for a tumble through the grass. <laughs> <laughs> now, that was pretty exciting. <laughs> I remember that tumble. <laughs> yeah, no, in, in my 12-year-old brain, that was my fault. Right. Mm. So, and I thought, okay, he's dead. I've, I've you know... But, and he just got out of the car, and he was pretty much fine. And from that moment, I was stuck. Uh, I followed, I pretty much followed the sport religiously for the last 20 years. Um, I got out of watching while I was in college for a while, and, but I've always come back to it. It's always, it's always my go-to thing. Right. You know, I was the 16-year-old girl who had pictures of NASCAR drivers on her wall rather than you know, heart drops. All my friends thought I was crazy, but that was just that was my thing. And it's been your thing ever since. Exactly. And so through the years, um, I did some freelance writing for a few websites, and kind of got into when I um, didn't when my husband lost his job a few years back. I started picking up website writing for um, like content website content sites. Right. Like, like content mills, basically, and started picking up some work to that, and then I started expanding and started decided that I wanted to start an NASCAR blog. So a friend of mine and I started one, and it wasn't really successful. And then I started writing for places like Examiner, and I did a few pieces for the final lap. And in that, I, I found that I really, really enjoyed writing about the sport. So... I did an interview with a friend of mine, and one of the questions she asked was what I thought was lacking for people who covered NASCAR. 
And in that moment, when she asked me that question, that's when Kristen Steps was born. On a whim, I sent out a tweet to all my Twitter followers, asking if anybody was interested. Initially, there were about five people that were interested. And over the years, we've had a few come and goes. Like I said, right now, we have about 20 active contributors and two photographers. And now, where, where are you... Um where were you based on? Let me ask. We'll, we'll go back to the beginning there. When you were 12 years old, where where were you at then? What's the? Uh, did you do any of the local racing? Uh, any local venues or what's what's home for you? Um, I'm actually from Southern Ohio. I live um, in Kentucky right now. I live about an hour from where I grew up. Um, from I'm from a small town no one's ever really heard of called Wheelersburg. It's about two hours south of Columbus, Ohio. Uh, south of Columbus. That's more your more your more your neck of the woods. It's more my yeah. neck of the woods. But I, I gotta ask you, um, do you know where Rabbit Hatch is? No, I do not know where that is. Have you ever heard of it? No. It's actually down yeah. there, right there by the Kentucky Ohio line. Rabbit Hatch. Right at R Rabbit Hatch. It's right outside of Cincinnati. Yeah, what is it? On the Kentucky side. It's actually a little how it's a little place down on the river down there, and the mayor is a dog. And it was actually featured on Animal Planet. Hmm. Wow, that's crazy. Not what I was expecting, Matt, but uh, <laughs> thank you for that bit of information. Uh, it's a neat little place. I mean, I don't know. I've never been down there. My I'm a dog fan. I, I'd vote so, for him. Yeah. So. <laughs> He's a nice I don't dog. Know. Yeah. You know, hey, You're a mad dog fan. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, where, why are we getting on these dogs all night? I, what is up with this? Well, because the mad and the mad dog, mad dog, and then the mad dog 2020, and, 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 and now the mad mayor dog, the mad, mad mayor, mayor dog. dog. Yeah. <laughs> it's a mad, mad night. Yeah, Kirk and Chef is based pretty much out of Ashland, Kentucky, but we have writers in. I was probably 12 to 15 states. We have two in Pennsylvania, one in Connecticut, two in Indiana, two in Texas, one that lives near Hilton Head. I have one in Napa Valley, uh, several in Colorado, two in Kansas. So we, you know, we're pretty much all over the U.S., so it's pretty convenient if we want to go to a race and cover it from the media center. We, you know, so, we pretty much have somebody within a couple hours of every track. Yeah, it sounds like you got, yeah, you, you've got all the bases covered, which would be helpful in traveling, you know, travel expenses and all that. Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely. And this cool is the riders to um, Sarasota, Phoenix, Daytona. Both Daytona races. Uh, we've had people at both Kansas races, both New Hampshire races. Someone went to Iowa, Charlotte covered. So we've been to quite a few races as a site this year. How long have you been doing this? How long has this um, your skirts and scuffs.com been up? Um, actually, next week we'll be celebrating our two-year anniversary as a site. Oh, cool. Uh, we're actually getting ready to do a bunch of um, getting ready to do a bunch of giveaways through our Twitter account and through our Facebook page. You can follow us online at Search and Stuff. It's a little hard to say sometimes, but um, but we're, we're pretty excited about it being our two-year anniversary. We have some cool things planned, and in the last six months, we've seen our readership really grow up, grow. Um, we've gotten a lot more into the social networking and PR and things like that. What are you What are you looking into for this all to grow into? Um, ultimately, there was, you know, when I started the site, I never dreamed that it would become what it is today. I figured it would have initial success, maybe, and then we would it would just kind of falter off, and people would stop reading the site, would lose interest. So, you know, we have really pretty much reached everything I originally had imagined for it. At this point, I would just like to be able to send my riders, my contributors, to the racetrack and then not have to worry about paying for things out of pocket. Everybody who travels for the site pays their own expenses out of pocket. No one makes a dime off the website except for what we receive via donation, which we have a donation page, but... You know, people have given us money over the last few months, 
but not what we need to be successful and to continue bringing the coverage that we need. We cost our riders on average three to five hundred dollars every week, and they travel to the track. Oh, easy, yeah. easy, yeah, easy, yeah, easy, easily, and that's you know, that's conservative. I mean, we we have it a lot easier because we have people in so many areas. But even if they are two or three hours away from the track, if you spend three days at the track, you're not going to want to drive home every single day. Yeah, you're going to need to stay in a hotel room. Mm-hmm. So at this point. If we could just get our people to the track and not have to worry about, you know, them not having a place to stay or not being able to afford to go, you know, none of the ladies would ever ask for a penny out of their, you know, from me. Do what they do. They love the sport so much. Doing it for the love of the game, pretty much. Right. I can relate to that. (laughs) <laughs> right, we might, we follow the every, every local racer out there can relate to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, so we follow the sport because we love it, not because we're being paid to, to write about it. And that's one of the big things that we, <laughs> you know, we pride ourselves in that. It's a passion. Yes, it is. A, it's very passionate. Yep. Yeah. So, and it's wonderful when you can do what your passion is. You know, when you're able to afford to do it, you can actually make a buck. Exactly. Isn't that even better? Yeah. <laughs> now, have you ever, have you given some thought to going out and talking to some of the local tracks around where each of y'all live at to possibly expand out there as well? In- yes, we actually have. Um, we've been we've done a few press releases recently, um, trying to and we got you know try, trying to get interest with local tracks, and we I've. I have a couple of small tracks in my area, and I've actually, you know, been in contact with their with their people, trying to you know, see if it would be if we could come and cover something from the track. And most tracks are really open and receptive to us doing that. Um, some are rare. She lives in Pika, Kansas, and she's actually been going to um, Heartland Speedway. I think that's the name of it. I apologize. It's a Pika. She's been doing some things there. And, you know, we're, we're just, our focus has always been NASCAR, but so that's one of our goals for next season is to really expand what we cover and cover more from the ground up rather than starting the top level. We want to start from, you know, the home track. Trying to get the short tracks and the local guys and, and all that stuff. Right. I think I can help contribute to that. My, yeah, my, yeah. my girlfriend is a photographer. And she obviously goes to the races that I go to, so that would cover uh, you know, a lot of the, well, I have an announcement to make a little later on the show, but yeah. another series, plus the series that I am sort of promoting, I, I, which I is the Mad Modified series. Yeah, and, I, and I've seen it, and I, it's what I expected. But uh, skirts and scuffs, will uh, I'll, I'll um, have, to, have to hook that up. Well, yeah, you have to get that hooked up. And, uh, Are you taking, now here's another interesting question. You said you've got all women doing it. Are you letting the guys come in and do some writing? We have, we have never done that. We've thought about it from time to time, letting a guy come in and kind of write opposite of what we write. But we've never found the right chemistry with a, with a male writer. A lot of, and a lot of guys are intimidated by coming into a group of 20 women. You know, we're, if you get all 20 of us together, like in a conversation, like in a chat room, in in a previous, I, I was going to say. <laughs> in a previous life, I was an Army wife. I, my, my wife was Army, so any time we'd go to these big functions, I was with the wives. So yeah, I, I can relate to that. You can. Well, okay. and, and the big icebreaker was, you know, was, you know, everybody go around the room and introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Joe, and I'm an Army wife. And then, yeah, I was one of the girls at that point. So, yeah, I was pretty much accepted with the group. But, yeah, I, I could see how it could be a little intimidating. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, we, we've actually thought about it, but we've never taken that final step for it. Might be something to plan for next year, though. There you go. There you go. So, what else? What else we got? We've got a little bit more time here. Um, <laughs> or not? And it was well, a very little bit of time. Very, very little bit of time. <laughs> Katie, is there anything else you'd like to uh, like to say, plug, or? Um, I would like to just say that um, anyone who wants to donate to Turkey Trap, you can do so by visiting GoFundMe.com slash and uh, um, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm NASCAR Katie. It's K A T Y. And um, Christian Jeff is on Twitter and Facebook. 
And if Monica Palumbo needs a job, she can replace them. She may be looking. She, yeah. she might, it sounds like she might be looking. I think she just did an interview. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, she's, I mean, I can't pay her anything, but she can. I can at least give her some awesome people to hang out with. <laughs> hey, it's all about networking, right? That's it. That's right. So. Thank you guys so much for having me on. Katie, thanks for being on, and if you get any great news, give us a call. All right, thank you so much. Thanks, Katie. Okay, who we got? Are we on? Off? Are we on? Oh, we off? Got, we we got, don't know yet. Hold on, oh. let me throw her Hold off. Hold on. Then. Oh, okay. There we go. So many buttons. TJ, you still there? Yeah, I got you. All right. My man, TJ Bell. What's up, bud? How are you, TJ? How are you guys doing? Pretty good. Uh, we're having a, it's been a pretty interesting night. And I think it's about to get more interesting. I think it's even going to get better. Yes. I was going to say, hopefully we can make it better here. Oh, oh man. man. Let me I got confidence in you. In, what, at least a year. Yeah, that's I said, we haven't had you on the show, I think, in at least about a year. That's been a while, yeah. I th I, we were talking about the pink fire suit. Ah, uh, yep, that, that's been about a year, because that's when the pink fire suit came out. Did you, um, you still got it, or did you get it auctioned off? I got it auctioned off. We did a, a great deal for that Moms on the Run charity out in Reno. And did it bring tons of money? It brought quite a bit. Well, we did the helmet and the... Uh, it as a package, so it, it brought, I don't even remember the number, but it brought a pretty good amount. Who made that fire suit? I'm going to ask you that. I forgot to ask then. Uh, Impact had it made. Impact had it made. Impact. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what's T.J. Bell been up to, man? Oh, man. Man, did some cut stuff, uh, nationwide stuff, um, working on my house, trying to do whatever I can. I've been training my butt off more than anything. Are, are we racing next year? I'm not sure if we're racing next year for sure. We got a lot of stuff in the works uh, running running this weekend for sure, so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, you running on the Cup side or the Nationwide? Uh, nationwide car. Driving the 50 car for Make Motorsports. Oh, okay. Cool. Very good. Yeah, very cool. Hey, what are you doing Monday the 24th? <laughs> Monday the 24th. Well, I'm not sure. Let me look. Be careful, Matt's he's moving and he needs somebody to help him bring it no, 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 Don't even listen to these cats. <laughs> you wanna come up and do a charity race? Twenty fourth when's Talladega? It's it's the, uh, the twenty third. Okay, yeah. Uh, I think that might be is that Michael Walter's golf tournament today? Is that Mikey's golf tournament? I don't know. I didn't get the invite. Yeah, I, they skipped me. <laughs> I barely just got it. I, I, think, I think I considered junk mail and just tossed it away. <laughs> yeah, no, they, they just used me for off the tee box because everything else I might as well just pick my ball up. And it's <laughs> <laughs> I could throw it at the hole fast. I could yeah. hit stick. Yeah. I'd probably yeah. find it if I throw it. I have, I have a feeling I'd be that way too. I could putt. Where's the race at? Uh, Virginia Beach, CHKD. It's for the uh, Children's Hospital at King's Daughter. It's a go kart charity race, indoor karting. And if I'm uh, if I'm not doing something, yeah, why don't you uh, email me the info on that? Um, are you still on Facebook? Uh, yeah. I'll, I, I'll get. You, I'm. I'm pretty sure I'm still friends with you. I'll get you on Facebook. We'll get it to you. Okay. You got to bring Wayne with you. Though. I'm short a guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to get Trevor to come out. <laughs> yeah, I can't think we can get Trevor to go. Oh, jeez. Oh, Lord. Well, I, I, okay. Trevor's a man with a job. He's, what's Trevor, 120 pounds, yeah, yeah. 130 pounds? You, you can take Trevor. I want TJ. You, yeah, I was going to say, ask Trevor about go-kart racing. He was ran his mouth, and we went to the indoor karts here, and I smoked. I need to make a phone call. <laughs> I, I want TJ. You get, you get Trevor, and then we'll, we'll make sure those two go out together. Oh, I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> no, I think it's a great idea. The, more, the better you know each other, the more likely you ought to wind up in a, in a grandstand. Oh, man. Think about it, man. I mean, it's it's for a great cause. Yeah, heck yeah. No, I mean, if I'm if I'm uh, available, I'll, how far is this from here? Uh, Five hours. Okay, yeah, if I'm available, maybe we'll just cruise up there, me and Trevor or something. You get up here, you got a place to stay the whole nine yards. Oh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see if we're available. I'm not sure the dates of that. I'm trying to look through my emails here to find out the dates of that golf tournament. So, yeah, if you can make it, we'd love to have you up here. And, yeah, pick up Trevor on the way. <laughs> yeah, uh, pick him up from, what, downstairs? I have to pee 
peel them off the simulator. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you remember, oh, wait a second. Yeah, I knew Remember's about that. always racing I racing. I remember we had, we were trying to call him, get a hold of him, and he was busy racing I racing. He forgot he was supposed to be on the show. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, I finally got a hold of his dad, and his dad peeled him away from well, the Well, actually, car. Wayne would be great at it, too. Yeah, Wayne could. Wayne could wheel. We'd yeah. get all three of you up here. Wheel, man. Yeah. I barely get Trevor off the simulator long enough so I can get some laps in before I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down there setting the cars up. I just go down there and drive. Well, that's what a driver's supposed to do, right? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Bring back whatever's left to go. That handled terrible. <laughs> what? Now, I'm like, how do you drive this thing? <laughs> so what else is TJ been? How's the clothing line? Did you get that off the ground? Yeah, yeah, we're working pretty hard on that. We got a new website up and going. We don't have the shopping cart fully in full effect yet, but we got the new website up and going. Been working hard on that. Uh, been riding a ton of road bikes, a lot of mountain biking. Um, I actually went and did a 50-mile charity ride on my road bike a few weeks ago. Wow. And I'm not going to lie about lap four, or mile 40. I was like, man, if I could find a quicker way back to my truck. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you take the cell phone. You just lay down on the side of the road, dial 911. Somebody comes and picks you up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so the bike shop, the guy that owns the bike shop here in town, he's like, ah, oh, you can do it. And, he helps me, or he hooks me up with bikes and stuff. He's like, yeah, I come out and do it. I'm like, okay, whatever, do you do? Well, I didn't know when you're riding that long, you don't take anything. I just took water in my water bottle. Like, no, you need all this electrolyte and power bars and all this. I did, I was cramping up so bad. <laughs> oh, man. But I finished it, so it wasn't bad. Okay, well, I cool. looked up my invite. It's the 19th and the 20th. The 19th and the 20th is Mikey's? Yep. Okay, cool. You should be able to find your ball by the 24th. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, as of right now, I just put my calendar on my phone says I have nothing. So if we have nothing, uh, we'll cruise up. Well, we'll then we'll get that set up. You're on a team. You put yeah. that, that. I'll put them on yours. Yep. Oh. <laughs> we got we got you squared away. You let me know. I, I, got, I got you covered. You just get here. Hey, TJ, I think I've got them worried. I've got two ringers already on my team. <laughs> well, send me the info on Facebook, and uh, me and Trevor will take care of your two ringers. All right. <laughs> Terry, you hear that in the back? <laughs> um, yeah, actually, I'm going to look at it right now. I'm going to see if I can get it to you right now. Okay, cool. Um, so what else has been going on? Talk to me a little bit. I mean, how's the racing been that you've been doing? Uh, it's been, I mean, the Cup Series, It's uh, that was, man, that was unbelievable. We made Indy. Um, unfortunately, I had to start and park there, but we made Indy, which was, uh, you know, a dream come true. We got to, got to make the green flag at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, which was uh, unbelievable. Um, we are going to race Watkins Glen, qualified 29th, drove all the way up to 24th, and power steering took a poop on us. Uh, and then we had a string of, you know, the go or go homers. It's so tough and talk about the worst feeling in the world is being one of those go or go homers. That is... It's nerve-wracking. I think that's why I've lost all my weight. It isn't the train. Because I've been sick to my stomach, nervous. It's, it's just a horrible feeling knowing that, uh, you know, we miss races by two one thousandths of a second. Ugh. It's just that crazy on that side of the fence. Uh, you know, those guys really stepped their game up. And it was an average of you had to pick up anywhere from 7 tenths to 1.2 seconds from practice to ball. Mm. It was it's, it was a pretty big deal. It's taught me a lot and uh, it's helped a lot. But uh, you know, I, I want to go back in the right situation and be able to go race race. That'd be great. But I think, uh, you know, we made some really big races and uh, we also had some rough spots where uh, we did make races. Um, now, you've been jumping around all year. You've actually done some trucks too this year, didn't you? Um, did I? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Too much driving. Yeah, we were running Daytona, and, uh, man, we were fast there. We were running about fourth or fifth when Quapel cut that tire down, and we got mm. clobbered up in that, uh, yeah. turn one and two act. And, uh, Charlotte, we were running about 15th, and, um, somebody decided he wanted to go left down the front straightaway and sent me through for a 
you could ride down to the infield grass and all four wheels off the ground. And it's just it's tough. I mean, I love truck racing. It's so much fun. But uh, you're not in the right equipment, and you're in the middle of the pack. You're racing where the racing is really, really hard. It's, uh, people under, don't understand how much easier it is to race in the top 10 than it is from 10th to 20th. Uh, it's pretty crazy. What do you... um? I, I, and I don't think I've asked you this before, but what do you prefer to race? I mean, do you like the cup? I, everybody likes the cup. But nationwide trucks, you got kind of a preference? You know what I like to race is whatever I have a chance to go win. <laughs> Man of my own heart, yeah. I, you know what, yeah, I, I Can like I drive that. that? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I mean, halfway through this cup deal when we were doing starting parks and, you know, we were happy because we were 28th on the board <laughs> that isn't what made me fall in love with the race in the begin with. Yeah, I'm at the top echelon of the sport, and yeah, I'm, I'm racing the biggest names and some of the best drivers in the world. But I'm not competing. You know, you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's you're out there competing in a truck or a nationwide car, and you can run top ten with those same Cup guys that race on Sunday, or you're out there and you in a truck and you race against Todd Bodine and Ron Hornaday and the guys that have really made this what it is and you mm -hmm. go out there and compete with them that's what makes you feel good about racing and that's what drives me keep wanting to win I'm, I'm, I'm typing so you guys got to answer some questions you guys got to ask some questions I'm typing a message you're to typing him. a message yeah <laughs> I'm going to tell them how we're going to just boot everybody's ass off the track <laughs> see Matt's over there scheming and Damn right. uh, I'm on a far end here so I can't hear you then uh <laughs> I'm in the middle. Just stuck in the middle between the two of us. Yeah. So what's what's the, uh, I didn't catch you before, what's the next big event for you? Uh, this weekend. We're going to run the Nationwide Car with uh, Liberty Tire Recycling and Pinnacle Rubber Mulch on board. The number 50 Make Motorsports uh, Nationwide Car. And, um, you know, it's a small team, but we've really stepped up the program. we got uh, Brad Parrott as the crew chief. And, oh, excellent. Yeah, and me and him have been working together really, really well. Uh, Good cohesion? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's like we've worked together before, and the best is I can explain things that I'm sure he's heard from some other driver and some is he's working with drivers, but he knows what I'm talking about. And, well, and that's a lot of people don't realize just how important that is, that, that the driver and the crew chief are speaking in the same language because there's so many slang terms for what a car can do yeah. and so many interpretations for what it is. I, you know, I was coaching a young lady out here who was telling me the car is loose. Well, to me, that means oversteer. Yeah. So we kept tightening the car up, and she kept saying it's getting looser. <laughs> wow. uh, it was understeer in her book. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that took out. Uh, that was, that was uh, hard. Yeah. I mean, she knew what she was talking about. But I didn't, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Yeah. But that... Uh, and you've got that cohesion and understanding is everything. <laughs> and you got, he, you got you got a, one of the damn best damn crew chiefs out there. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's amazing, and, uh, you know, and it's because it's, I can say what I'm feeling, and then he'll put it into his terms and ask me if that's what I meant. So, you know, that's that's the cool thing about it, because, like, I could tell him, you know, hey, we're dog walking up the track, we're tight, we're loose, we're tight, we're loose, we're tight, we're loose, and he'll break it down into his terms and say in his words exactly what I'm saying so he knows exactly what I'm talking about. So great communication, that's always a plus. And it's hard to so, it's hard to it, clarify it is, exactly yeah. what you're feeling sometimes, especially when you get a car that's doing that, you know. It's, yeah. <laughs> well, first it's loose and then it pushes, and it goes back to loose again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and that's, I mean, a lot of people, and, you know, Mac after one of my best friends, he, I brought him to Richmond with me when I was running the cup car up there, and we were, we were absolutely horrible. But he could kind of relay what I was talking about because me and him talk about race cars so much and what we feel that he was helping... He was like an interpreter almost. It's kind of funny because what I was saying in the car, I mean, I knew we were loose off, but we were loose off because we were tight. You know, the first third of the corner, and I had way too much wheel in it rolling the center, and then back on throttle with too much wheel in the car, you're going to break loose on exit. He's on the simulator. <laughs> Roger just hit oh. up Trevor. He's trying to get him to call in to get a response back. He says, I'm work too busy working. <laughs> oh, he ain't working. He's sitting around on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all he, he he's on the simulator, isn't he? I told him you just have to get up with TJ later and let you know what you got you him him to him into. 
Yeah, no, he's over at his shop actually with his dad, and uh, I'm sure he's he's doing a very good job of holding the chair down. Or. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is gonna be fun. I can tell this. Um, so Charlotte this weekend. What else is on the schedule for the rest of the year? Yeah, I think we're gonna. Um, I think we're gonna try the rest of the nationwide races, and uh, hopefully here in a few weeks, if uh, everything goes well, I might be back in a, a different Cup car um, for maybe two or three of the final races. So uh, got a bunch of good stuff working, but uh, I don't tell uh, a bus in the seat. My name's on the door. Well, I hope your name's on the door for the rest of the season, and hopefully we we, we can get you a ride full time next year. Yeah, it'd be nice. Uh, you know, I know everyone that's uh, been working with us and working for me is really, really busting their butt, and I can't thank them enough for what they've done. And, uh, you know, just everyone that supported me, it means a lot. Even through, you know, we started a new TJ Bell fan page because I got the 5000 on my personal one. I had no more. I feel bad. But, uh, you know, everybody go check out the fan page. Uh, it is me that types on there, <laughs> not nobody else. So, <laughs> time. I don't see you on there much, so I guess that's a good thing. You must be busy. Well, I'm trying to. Uh, you know, it's uh, this year I kind of, you know, it's not that I've taken racing not serious, but uh, I've gotten a little bit older, and I started seeing the, when those guys say, hey, don't worry, when you're older, you'll get fat like me. I saw that coming finally. <laughs> so I hired a trainer, and... Uh, been working super super hard and uh, going to the shop every single day still learning as much as I can about the race cars and uh, especially on that cup car I don't I don't understand the bump stops and the asymmetry and you know that's all that stuff's brand new to me so I was learning as much as I could spend as much time at the shop as possible and uh, just really trying to make myself a better race car driver well that's cool and, and you already are a pretty good little wheel man so keep striving for perfection yeah that's it yeah, so. you know, there's always someone better. There's always someone looking to take your job. So you got to do what you got to do to uh, keep it. Well, yeah. that, that's the case way that is with almost all of them. All you guys out there have to worry about that. Yeah, I know. Look at Trevor. He's beating me on the simulator down there. Yeah, I was going to say, there's always some young skinny kid that's up and coming, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's always someone behind you. Yeah. yeah, I can't remember where we went, but me and Trevor were downstairs in Chicago, and we got on the simulator, and we were doing qualifying runs, and we went for two hours beating each other by like a half a tenth or a tenth. It was back and forth. It, it was a pretty good time. You know what? He is a pretty good kid, and, and he's one of those that, that he's been, he's he was raised around racing. He's almost like... I don't know, like a Buddy Baker. That's all he's ever known. Or Gordon, kind of. I mean, he just kind of grew or, up Or around. Jeff Gordon. Or, he's, he's or, got, you yeah. know, he, I've seen a lot of kids his age that have, a, you know, equivalent in talent, but he's got a lot of poise. He's, mm -hmm. yeah. When he's in that car, it's not the, you know, it, what is he, 18, 17? He's 18. Yeah, uh, he's, it's, he doesn't have that uh, the mentality of your typical teenager behind the wheel. Yeah. Yeah. When, when you get in there and you run with him, you'll see him pick his shots. He's got a lot of pace. He's got a lot of poise. It's there's a lot of uh, it's got a lot of smarts behind. Yeah, it's got a lot of smarts behind him, and, and you know it's uh, it, it's I, I don't know exactly how long he's been racing, but he's he's got the experience of somebody with at least well the mindset of somebody with at least a decade. Put it down there. I, this is, I think his third or fourth year in a modified, isn't it? Uh, this would be his. I think it's only a second, and he yeah. won the championship. Yeah, he won the championship this year. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he's still the rolling, rolling Thunder modified yeah. championship. Yeah. Second year. He was a rookie last year, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He won a rookie of the year last year. He won a race last year, which yeah. was yeah. yeah Newport. There were only yeah. There were only three of us. Four of us that won races. Hmm. Me, AJ, Gale, and Trevor. Nice. Yeah. yeah. yeah no, I mean, yeah, he surprises me a lot on the radio when I go out and, and work with him and get on the radio. And sometimes you, you need to calm him down because he has his dad in him for sure. But uh, <laughs> he's fiery. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh -huh. You can bring him down pretty quick. It's uh, you know he, he's got he's got his dad in him for sure, but he's also uh, pretty level-headed most of the time. Cool. Um, you, you know, we, and we missed this at the beginning, uh, and, and I should have brought this up, but tell us a little bit about how you started racing. Um, I, well, I was at my first race when I was two weeks old. My dad raced off-road cars. Uh, 
Class 2 Unlimited Buggies out in the desert. He raced against Ivan, Ivan Iron Man, Stewart, Rod Hall, all those guys. So I was at a Mint 400 when I was two weeks old in the motorhome. Pretty much born into it. Uh, you know, I used to go out in the garage with Dad, work on the off-road car. You know, I'd fall asleep sitting in a tire or something like that. But uh, I, I did that. You know, I was eight Where's years we? old in a go-kart. <laughs> You guys talked about this indoor go-karting. I won championships from 1988 to 1996. Northern Nevada, Northern California, IKF, uh, won a championship every single year. So, um, I got me a ringer! <laughs> <laughs> then, then, I, uh, then I moved up to Formula 4 2000, um, the national or the, the regional national series and I was the only kid under 18 given a national license before he was emancipated. Wow. Run, so I could run the road courses but I couldn't run the ovals that were sanctioned by USAC because I wasn't emancipated so I wasn't 18. So the next year I went to the pro series when I was 18 and we got second overall in the road to Indy oval championship and third overall in the in the points um, behind Dan Weldon and Buddy Wright. Wow. That's oh, impressive. Man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, your initial plan was to go to Indy, correct? Yeah, 100%. So, after that, I went to Toyota Atlantic, and, uh, you know, I, I spent two years in Toyota Atlantic, and um, that's about when the Brazilian invasion started, and um, they were all coming over with all their money, and, you know, me and my manager sat down and were like, hey, let's go try a stock car race, and they still take the kids for talent. Well, we didn't find nothing that year, so I moved to England and I drove a prototype sports car over there the factory of Scari, and I drove 24 hours of Le Mans, 24 hours of Daytona, 12 hours of Sebring, and did all Dunlop tire testing for uh, factory Dunlop over there. Great year, so that was pretty cool. Got to live in Silverstone, woke up to F1 cars testing, or MotoGP bikes testing every morning. It was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, now that would be, that would be cool. Yeah, I mean, it was really neat because, I mean, honestly, you could hear them. We lived in a little village, and there was a main road, and across the road was Silverstone. Wow. Yeah, it was really neat. So uh, that, that was definitely an experience of a lifetime, and 24 Hours of Le Mans was uh, unbelievable. It was, it was the coolest thing I've ever done. The Silverstone in Brahms, Brahms Hatch. Bronze Hatch. Bronze, Bronze Hatch. I've it? actually seen that track. I as would close as I got the race, you know, was I... I I would love to. That'd I saw a speedway places. sign off the M2, I think it is, and we turned down there, and I climbed up through the bushes to the fence, and why? <laughs> somebody was out there testing. That's as close as I got the Browns hot. I, that's two places I would love to see, if not be able to drive them. Right. Yeah, well, we got to run the little track at Silverstone a bunch, and then Brands Hatch I never got to run, but we ran Snedder a bunch. And, we, and I have so many laps around that place. It's unbelievable. Wow. World traveler here. That's like the Hickory or Road Racing man. That's just that, got all kinds of history. Oh yeah. yeah. So, um, come back to the states. <laughs> come back to the states. Uh, thought I'm gonna go truck racing. Um, realized uh, I have no idea how to drive a stock car. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <coughs> I ran four truck races in '03 and decided I had no idea what I was doing. So. I went back to ARCA in 04, ended up Rookie of the Year, second overall in the championship. Uh, one tech driver of the year, completed 98% of the lab, uh, all these awards. And, uh, you know, I thought good things were happening, and uh, so I got a, got a call from Roush Fenway to go drive 15 truck races over there. But uh, I was, was definitely the number three truck at Roush Fenway Racing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, needless to say, uh, we went to Michigan. I'll, I'll never forget this story. I, and, you know, I, I love what Roush did for me, and Jack Roush is an unbelievable guy. But uh, we went to Michigan, and I was, there was a truck that had three different wraps on it. Stickers were blowing off as we were going so fast around the place. But I was about wrecking going down the straightaway and screaming, yelling, I can't drive this thing. Ten minutes left in final practice, find out we have a bent truck on. Oh. And it was supposed to be a new truck on. So, uh, 
you know, it's just it, it, it's a tough situation when you're not the number one driver. Travis Quapel obviously was number one driver. Eric Darnell. Right. Me and Peter Shepard, uh, you know, shared a truck. So, you know, needless to say, and Jack kind of, you know, he had his, one of his airplane wrecks that year and kind of wasn't involved. And uh, so I asked to get out of my contract at the end of the year. I got out of that and I went to TRG racing for uh, 16 races the next year. And for those races, we were in the top 10. Uh, that's, that's where TRG motors started in the truck series. Right. That, uh, that is, and after that, I got a full full deal at Red Horse Racing, which I thought you know, I finally got the ride. I could show what we could do, and um, we went out uh, Daytona. I think we ended up like 11th. California got fifth. Uh, I got rid of Johnny Benson. We lost some of our Toyota funding. Right. Kind of, kind of, a little progression downhill. From but you're still not giving up on this, are you? No, not one bit. This is a this is a losing sport, fortunately, and uh, if you can't take it. You don't need to belong. One of our per people in our chat room want to know: um, What do you do to afford yourself the opportunity to do this kind of stuff? I work hard, beat, beat the phones, talk to as many companies as possible. A lot of a lot of the opportunities right now. All business to business. The day of somebody writing a check to put a sticker on a race car, and unless you're in the Cup Series, all these companies want to For truck racing, nationwide racing, a lot of it is business. To give to this business, justify them. Money is that getting it. low or is it just me? I think TJ's winding down here. That's what TJ, are you running out of energy or is the phone going low? No, I, don't, I don't know. How about, you got me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're good. <laughs> All right. So do you, I mean, are you just out beating the bushes yourself, or are you, uh, you know, involved with marketing I'm companies? I bushes myself. I have a guy that does it. Um, my mom does it. You know, anybody that you can talk to that, you know, thinks they might be able to do something, day and age, people are really driven by money. You tell them you find me this money, you get 10% of it. Yeah. You know how hard people really work for you. Oh, yeah, that's that's... That's the big fuel right there is, you know, give us the money and we'll, we'll get you hooked up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I've been, I have been fortunate in my life that my parents got me to a certain stage of my career and uh, dad pulled the plug and said, all right, now it's, uh, you make it or you go get a job. And you are working right now too, aren't you? Uh, you know, I, I work on my own clothing company. Uh, you know, I do, I do everything I can. I work at the shop. I do everything I can. My fiance works her tail off. She's a hairdresser, and we do what we can to survive. And uh, you know, she's very supportive of my dream and uh, what I gotta do to uh, keep racing. That's cool. That, that's that's a plus right there. Yeah, having a woman behind you that will support, support you. you. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Helps help right. drive you in the right direction with the yeah. same driving force. Right. That's it. Yeah, and keep me out of bad situations. Uh, Sometimes I think she feels like she's a babysitter when I'm having bad days and stuff like that, but uh, we're good for each other, and she definitely points me in the right direction a lot of the time. Sometimes that's their job. Well, I was going to say, that, okay, never mind. I, I, I'll, I'll right. tell you later about it. <laughs> so, I, I'm gonna let, I, I shouldn't open my mouth. Um, Not on here. TJ, it's great to hear from you. We still got to talk about MAD. Yeah. So, and we're gonna let TJ go here. Okay. Have you heard about what's going on with Mad, TJ? Uh. -uh. Mad is a, a modified division. Now, I, I raced with with Trevor last year in the Rolling Thunder Modified Tour. Huh. And uh, you know, I just saw a lot of the way that purses were going and the growing expense of the tire bills, and it was just it's buckling the teams. You know, the Rolling Thunder series got down to. I think last year we had maybe four or five cars that ran the whole series and probably even less than that this year. Yeah. So what I did was, I mean, for years I've been trying to tell promoters and racetracks that they need to run on a tire that you can race more than one race and be competitive. After all, this is, it's an IMCA style modified. It shouldn't, you shouldn't have to put four tires on the thing every week 
to have a race. So anyway, nobody listened. I did it myself. And we went out and we ran our first race last week. And I took a set of tires that I had over 100 laps of testing and qualifying. And everybody put tires on in practice and went out and ran every lap of practice they could run. And then they went out and ran the race. And as the race went on, every car got better. And we're going up to Franklin County on October 29th on the same four tires. And I'm going to run all the practice and all the laps up there. It's a $75 tire. Uh, I... I'm projecting four to five hundred competitive laps out of it. That's awesome. That, awesome. And that takes the load off the speedways of, you know, like a promoting body to come in and say, hey, we want X amount of thousands of dollars for a purse, and we're not really sure how many cars we're going to get. Yeah. Because yeah. the speedways are buckling. I mean, they're, they're in business, and they're, they're hurting, too. And all they promise with the, that the MAD series asks for is that whatever we pay to get in is what the purse becomes on the way out. And you get a show, so sell all the hot dogs and bologna burgers you want. We'll bring a show in. Yeah. And uh, last week seemed to be uh, seemed to be very successful. Everybody liked the tire. I was trying to get uh, I was trying to get Trevor and and uh, Chris Brown to come up for the uh, for the Franklin County race on the 29th, and I'm not I'm not sure exactly where they stand on that, but it's uh, it's it's to, it's the answer. It's uh, definitely the answer yeah. to do this. Yeah. And I opened up the rules a little bit so you can bring some different types of modifieds and stuff in. Like, I had a couple of guys with the vintage mods. They were like older Troyer type cars and stuff like that. that cool. Jack up the ride height, put the tires on, and come on and race, boys. <laughs> Make the weight, two barrel. Have fun. I mean, we were down there. There was a guy with an older Troyer in the, uh, he was the ground pounders, I think it was. And they were running like 15.2 on a 12 inch tire. And we we're running like, our pole time was like 15.6 on an 8 inch. So, I mean, you put them tires on, that guy will probably run mid-pack. Yeah, probably. You know, if he gets it hooked up, maybe he'll run up front, but it's not going to be that big a difference. Yep. Nope. Oh, that's cool. That's, uh, you know, and that's the that's unfortunate thing about racing these days. Is it takes so much for, you know, for people to go racing. And, you know, when people like you come up with something that uh, people can do, it, you know, more, more affordable, and it gives a lot more people uh, the opportunity to do what they love. And that was that was my entire goal because I've just seen too many friends of mine just park their cars. Yeah. You know, there's 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 tons of race cars out there that just don't go to the racetrack because they can't afford it. Yep. And then uh, some of the promoters, and I'm not knocking promoters, but some of them have kind of lost touch of what's going on. Like, well, we put a two thousand dollar win race out there and nobody came. So it's because it cost them a thousand dollars to go there and have a shot at it, and they just didn't have the thousand to even leave the shop. Yep. Right. And they had to pay the mortgage, the rent, put the kid through school, so it, braces, it, yeah, whatever it was. It, it's not necessarily, it, it's the whole economy that, that's hurting us on this. It's, it's not necessarily promoters. I, I don't think promoters are looking at it the right way, but it's not all their fault. No, I'm not blaming the promoters. Yeah. I mean, promoters are doing what they always did and it always worked, but the economy is, is tough. And, and they've the economy's got to changing, out. and the promoters and, need to do a little flexibility. The yeah, gas is so. more, the tires are more, it costs you more to get into the track. Everything is more, yeah, except for the car count, and that's way down. Yeah. I, that sounds like the Nationwide Series, Truck Series. It's everything. It's everywhere. Yeah, every, yeah. Like, everywhere. you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> we run one of the local tracks out here, and they're like, wow, we got a great field of cars, we got 20 cars. Well, that's great for this day and age, because we had 10 of them last year, but in reality, there ought to be 50 of these things out here. <laughs> I, Go ahead. I, I was talking to a, a, a racer friend of mine, and he's been around it forever and a day, and we were talking economy. It wasn't necessarily the racing. But his point was, and he made it, it was very clear, and I understood what he said. He's not doing anything business-wise, and he's a business owner. Mm -hmm. He's not doing anything business-wise different than he was doing three or four years ago. He said, back then, I could go racing and do anything I want. Right. I haven't changed nothing. In the last two years, I'm not able to go racing, and I'm not able to go do the things that I was able to do two years ago. Right. That's how much the economy has changed. It's changed so much that it's hurting. Because all of, these, all of these local teams, these local short track teams, this is all, it's expendable income. Yeah. There's nobody's making a living at it. No. You know, and, and it's... Uh, if it's expendable income and they don't have the expendable income, you're just not going to get the cars. You want to make a million dollars in racing? Spend start, three. Start with three million. Yeah. Start with three million dollars. Right. Yeah. Yep. 
Well, you know, you're talking about the car counts going down. I think uh, last time I checked, the truck race, uh, out of 36 possibles, there's only 32 listed. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> and it's, it's tough. And, but, you know, you, then you got uh, the nationwide cars here in Charlotte, and we're going to have 50 cars out there. It's, yeah. it's, it's traveling all the way across the country out to Las Vegas. Uh, you know that. I mean, people can't afford the diesel fuel and to go out there. And if they finish, you know, thirty fourth, that doesn't even cover their travel, their hotel rooms, their nothing, let alone tire bills, motor bills, or anything else. Right. And then it's going to cost them how much? Same amount to go back to the next race. Yeah. yeah. Which is where I really targeted the series was. You know, a perfect example. A good friend of mine, Hunter Slayton. He's a good, good driver, front running car. Uh, lap two lost a motor. Yeah. Now, you know, under normal circumstances, not only would he have to build another motor, because the bottom end came out of the thing, there's nothing left of it, but to go to the next race, after building a motor, he's still going to have to buy $500 worth of tires, $600 worth of tires to be competitive. And that's not the case now. He can fix that car and go right back out yeah. with the same tires that he ran and not, you know, and at least save that amount. Uh, Jimmy Humlet was leading the race, sat on the pole, was leading the race and broke a suspension mount. You can go back to the shop, weld it back on, it's fixed. It ain't going to cost you a dime. Right. But he would have been out five, six hundred dollars in tires. He can go back to the shop, weld that thing back up, you know, bolt the electric tire back, back on the car, and, and go back out and race. Yeah. Same tires. Right. And maybe even be at a little disadvantage because the rest of the guys put more wear on their tires, and it seems that they actually get better with age. Hmm. Tentatively. <laughs> they do. Burn they out. Do. All the cars. Do what? You can just go do burnouts in front of a shop or something. <laughs> well, you know, I, you guys have talked about shaving, and I've heard the burnouts, and I've heard the soaking, but you know what? All of that still, if you take the set and you shave it and you soak it, it's still cheaper than buying five, six hundred dollars worth of tires to go out and race again next week. Yeah. 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 And you know, one thing I looked at was, you know, for the for the have teams, uh, you can put tires on the have not teams, put new tires on, and let them run them things. And when they're just about worn out and fast, you can say, "Give me them back. I got four new ones for you." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you take the used up tires, put them on the yeah. on the have car, and give the have not guy four new tires, and you can go out and race again. Right. Yep. I think promoters need to step up, and they and they need to look at not necessarily how they can make money, but how they can. What's well, it's a, a final line? How how can they save <coughs> the drivers money? If, if they can get the people to race cheaper, they're going to have more people out there. And you're going to have more fans watching the races because they have more to watch. But, but are you, uh, from a business standpoint, and I'm not, I'm not a promoter, I'm not a Speedway owner, although I'm basically going to be the promoter of the series because that's the position I'm in, um, are you better off selling four tires to ten cars or having 50 cars in and only having them buy five tires? Get out of the tire business. I mean, well, it's not I, it's, always there's the best there thing more to profit to them to make that, and, I, and it's not a business study well, that well, it's listen, not my business, so I didn't study well, the, it. The thing, the thing you look at, okay, say, all right. How much more do we make from concession stands? How much exactly. more do we make from souvenirs? How much more do we make from ticket sales? Hey, and I don't know about you, but I'd go watch a fifty, you know, fifty guys show up and try to T run for thirty TJ, spots. TJ, did, did you ever yeah. watch Wind Tunnel? Yeah. Yeah. Did, did you see it this last weekend? No, I did. Me neither. They had um, used to be CEO of Chevrolet. Mm -hmm. um, Holt. Yeah. Gloria. You know who I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he brought up a, a good qu quote that, that they had a problem with the camshafts at one time. Okay, and... and Late 70s. Well, and, and you got to have to relate this to kind of the promoters. And he went to them and said, this is a simple fix. And all the, the, the budget guys came up and said, no, that'll blow our budget out the window. I said, well, we got to do something... You know, let's fix it. Yeah. Well, then they came back to him and said, no, because that means we have to pay for it. Let them pay for it by by buying the new camshafts. Don't remanufacture them for them. Right. And I think that's kind of what promoters have gotten into that sense of, we're not going to pay for it. Make the drivers all pay for it. Right. That's why they're buying two and four tires. That's why they go to track fuel. That's why it's twenty-five dollars to get into the back gate, and you got to buy a license. They've passed that cost to run a racetrack to the racers. To the racers. Yeah. Yeah. But you're running out of racers. Well, and and now that's where the problem here in lies. Right. You're running out of people. You know, even fifteen years ago, there were still guys that were saying, 
I hope I do good tonight because this is my rent money. Rent money, or this is Dirt my racing. Ele- I, if we ain't in the top three, we ain't got gas money to make it home. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah. But the deal was though is, you know, ten fifteen years ago, you would make enough. To pay that rent. Well, dirt racing I did. I didn't have to keep buying tires Ex- for it. Exactly. I could exactly. get that, you know, that, that hundred and something dollars for third place, hundred and fifty well, bucks for third place, and I had a- asphalt, I had gas money for the truck to, to get home. home. Asphalt Dinner. wasn't that you know, back then it was what, I think seventy dollars, eighty dollars for a tire. Oh, and that's what we've got. You know, back in the day. A yeah. Seventy five dollar so. tire. But yeah, I mean but if you don't have to keep buying them, it could be a four hundred dollar tire and it'd still be cheaper. But promoters mm-hmm. need to start looking at that and they need to start saying what can we do to get our drivers back? They don't seem to believe it's going to work because I've been pitching it forever. And finally, I just started it myself. And, and I, I hope it starts a virus. I hope, I, I hope we see 30, 40 cars in every class running on reusable tires. Because really, you drive a new car. How many tires a week you put on it? No. None? You don't put a right front on uh, every race? Well, yeah. This is only uh, like a, a second yet, or third yeah. race. Yeah. So. Oh, so you, you have yeah. well, the front yeah. running full guys season, yeah. put full what, season. one, two tires on it every week? You can one. buy one tire each week. One tire, one tire yeah. each week. Most of them do do it. And yeah. the tire for you cars, what, 90, 100 bucks? 75. Actually. 75 bucks. Oh, yeah, they're cheap recaps. Yeah. Okay, this would be cheaper, and you could run a modified. Right, yeah. yeah. Because I mean, you buy one tire, aside from damage, five. Races, you probably put a right rear on every five races, mm-hmm. left rear, almost maybe like eight. a rotate. I got 100, yeah. 140 laps, I think, and the seams are still in the left front tire. They'd be coming right here. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll move the fronts to the back <laughs> and put the fronts yeah. on the car. And the cars, I mean, we're running maybe a second slower than you would on a sticky F53 for TJ, 600 bucks a week less. Well, mm-hmm. you know, what we yeah. were just talking about, it, and, and you were just, you, I think you were trying to say, they're feeling it in the nationwide in the trucks, too, aren't they? Yeah, bad. I mean, uh, I mean, like our team, and it's funny you're talking about reusable tires. We actually get some of the tires from Cup teams because they'll go run two, three laps on them and then go bolt on another set. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sometimes that's our practice set. We'll go get a set of tires from a na- from a Cup car. Yeah. I mean, that's how a lot of these nationwide teams are surviving. It, by doing. We had somebody on not too long ago that was talking about the, that made more money off the starting parts than they did if they would have completed the race. You remember that? Yeah. Um, I mean, and I'm not going to lie. We've had to do it two or three times this year. But, uh, you know, it's not a good feeling. But, unfortunately, that's what our sports come to. NASCAR's put us in this box. And that's, you know, what we have to do to, you know, start in park one race, make enough money so we can go buy all the tires next weekend to go race. Yep. Yeah, and that's... Uh it's not what it's. I mean, it's what you got to do, but it's not what it's about. Yeah, exactly. I mean, everybody should have a shot to go out there and run the distance. Yep. And, and I think. I, I don't know about you guys, but everybody tires. I love an underdog. They make well, wait, money you don't buy. Everybody. You don't buy. And now, quote me if I'm wrong. You know, correct me if I'm wrong on this, TJ. But you don't buy the tires. Right now, you pretty much rent them. You rent the tires. Yeah. You don't even take them home. Yes. No. Well, I, I, I'm still thinking back in the old time when I was down there, and I'm. Be sitting there beside somebody, and here's the tire bill, thirty-six thousand dollars. And after the end of the race, they were toting the tires. They didn't have a good year truck to reload them all back up into. Yeah. That's where everybody well, was selling all the that's tires. That's the nice thing about what we're doing too is we don't have that monstrous pile of used tires. You send them back to the Tal City, and they recap them. Hmm. It's hey, green. Hey. I'm not much of an environmentalist, <laughs> but it is. It's it's yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. I got four tires recycle. for you too, by the way. You can send back. Hang on. We talk to Carl. He's got the tire bin going. I, I, oh, I got, Carl's got it? Okay. Well, the initial deal I had with Tal City was they sent me four tires, and I paid the shipping. And I told my staff, I will send you every scuff we have, and I sent them 100 tires. Is thank you. But for, if I'm not mistaken, and don't quote me on this, but Tal City will actually give you three bucks a tire and cover the shipping. Oh, hell, I can come up with a buttload of modified tires. I'll send them all up. I know. I was looking at that. Tires. I was like, I got, <laughs> this is like $300 worth of scuffs here, you know? But I didn't want to get financially involved with it because I yeah. thought that would be a conflict of interest. I just wanted to make something good happen. You're going to get a point out of it. Good. You know what? Yeah. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> You're always It's hungry. about that time. Last announcement. Okay, we, we, TJ... Uh, this is this is a great moment here. I know what it is, and I'm proud to. Right, I, right. We haven't able, actually been able to put it out we there. We got to do the announcement. Now, but uh, Darren Mix, the general manager of AfterShock Motorsports, has given me the taking the leash off to say that we, uh, AfterShock Motorsports, are running the NASCAR Southern Wheel Modified Series next year. Yes. We will be uh, going for Rookie of the Year 
Awesome. Uh, High five. Yeah, yeah, I, I uh, yeah. yeah. Fifteen inch <laughs> tires. Here we come. Thirty two years, and I'm finally up on one of the top divisions. So yeah. Awesome. Congratulations. That's thank you. Thank you. So yeah, we're really looking forward to that. So that's why I will not be at the big money race this week at Langley because I'm going for the. You going on Charlotte? I'm, no, I'm going up to New York to pick up a car. Uh, uh, oh. A car and a bunch of parts and pieces, and, and bring it on back down here and <laughs> park it. Park it. Together. It's no, nice new home in southern Tom, central Virginia. Tom, <laughs> Thomas posted on. Um, they're going to Charlotte this weekend. Yes. And he says, last race, I don't have to bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That we have a good watching. friend, TJ uh, Thomas Stinson, that's been. Been doing phenomenal in the Southern Modified. He is, and he's—I mean, he's, he's doing—he's doing a great job down there. And it's uh, and Thomas was really one of our. Thomas was one of the guys that really got me thinking about it because Thomas runs—he runs really good. We race Rolling Thunder with him. We race Langley with him. And you know, more than more often than not, he beat us. But we got out in front of him, and beat him a couple of times. You know, which I don't know if I can do that on the Southern Tour. I'm gonna try like hell. You know, if but he's running. I think he was running third in points or something like that till they had engine problems, whatever. Yep. So, you know, I mean, if I can do there what I did against him here and he's running third, I'm sure I'd get up in the top ten somewhere. Um, nationwide, the car counts are down. It's not like running up in New England where they get, you know, 45 cars yeah. show up and you better have 200 grand under the hood mm -hmm. to, 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 to run even think yeah. about making it into the race. TJ, right. if you get a chance, and I know you're going to be at the track this weekend, when the Southern Modifieds, number seven, Thomas Stinson. All right. Go up and meet him. He's a great guy. He's a true friend, a great friend, but never more of a redneck have you ever met. He's a good old boy. He's I a like good old him. boy. Go up and meet him. He's a great and he, guy. He is a wheel man. All right. Well, uh, I'll do that. And Actually, boys, i got to run to the airport to pick up my fiance's sister because she's coming into town. Uh, so We've been cleaning the house, getting everything ready. So I know she's all excited, so she's getting me off the phone here. Cool. Um, I sent you a link already. Um, I sent you my number. If you, but I'm serious. If you want to come up, it's all taken care of. All right, guys. I'll take a look at it and I'll get back at you. All right. Thanks, let TJ. us know. Thanks, TJ. Thank you. Have fun. Take Bye. care, bud. And it's gotten hot in here, and I know it's not that hot outside. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all the heated. Uh, um, yeah, it's been a good show. Um, www.cliftonsavagemotorsports.com mm -hmm. backslash chkd100 and there's also a Facebook page which is just search for chkd100 at AIK yep um, October 24th 5 o'clock and you need to change that on there it says 7 was that the link oh I think I added a new link but yeah okay, okay. Um, Virginia Beach AIK even if you're not racing come over and watch yeah um we had talked about this, um, and you said anybody that's on the list can yeah. come over and practice for 15 bucks. Mm -hmm. um, Five dollars goes to CHKD, yeah, which is cool. Yeah, um, and the breakdown was 20 was going to, yeah, 20 is going to CHKD, 30 is going to the track, 30 is going to the track, 20 yeah. is going to CHKD. Looking for 20 teams. We've got 15 right now, Pretty much, yeah. we need Thanks. five more teams. So, if you got a, anybody out there. Any company, come yeah, on, race with us. I think we have, have like a great time. It's all about fun. It's a good cause. It's all about fun. We have a blast. Yeah, y'all need to check out uh, Taylor Mann's uh, YouTube videos. He actually put a link up there of the race from last year, and it's got some pretty exciting stuff in there. So. It, it was it was wild. Yeah, nobody got hurt. Yeah, amazingly <laughs> enough. Amazingly, <laughs> nobody got hurt in this video. No, no right. I mean, I mean, the cars are fast, but you're not going to get really banged up on a thing. I mean, just well, they're fast blast, enough that maybe. you're you're just getting, you're going to get lumps and bumps from the seat, you know, a little yeah, maybe a little shaft or rash bouncing around, around, but that's about it. Now um, we are supposedly going to try to set up to yeah. do a live feed from out there. Let's talk racing. The whole four hours, five hours, there. however long it takes. Yeah, so it'd be great for people to come out there. Yeah, even and, watch and it. If we get some of the guys that we've talked to. Some of the guys that are off the, that, that weekend or to get up here, you'll have some good opportunities to get them, some autographs from some of the tough drivers, mm -hmm. nationwide drivers. Some of the drivers have got huge win lists on their side. Right, Terry? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we're all, well, we're all somewhat professional. <laughs> but we can get a little bit carried away, so you never know what you're going to see. This is how hard you can't. <laughs> well, we believe in racing. Believe in us. Yeah. 
Have a good night. Hi, my name is Natalie Sather. I drive the 94 K and N Lady Eagle Safety Wear Butler Built Seats Bell Helmets Hooker Harness Seat Belts Number 94 at South Boston Speedway. Be sure to listen to Let's Talk Racing TV. I'm Sam Hunt, drive 42 car. I want to thank Let's Talk Racing. Hey guys, I'm Daytona 500 winner Trevor Bain, and thank you for watching Let's Talk Racing. Hi, I'm Robert Richardson Jr., driver of the number 23 Dodge Challenger for R3 Motorsports in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, and you're watching Let's Talk Racing. Uh, I'm Timothy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for watching Let's Talk Racing tonight. Join us next Wednesday. See ya! Let's Talk Racing is brought to you by PC Doctors, Computer Sales and Services. This doctor still makes house calls. And also, Hampton Incredible Tees and Signs, both located at 1248 North King Street in Hampton, Virginia.